Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video we are going to have a look at the descent preparation in the Airbus A320. Now, the first question is when do we start the descent preparation? And the answer is at any time it is convenient but latest 80 nautical miles from the top of descent. Personally I would recommend to start it when you're somewhere 120 through 160 nautical miles from it. So basically when the top of descent is just coming in over here while you're on a 160 mile range. Now, the descent procedure itself starts by getting the latest weather information and we are going to do that through ACAS today. So the exact ACAS software you have on your airplane might be different from what is shown in here since there are so many different possible uh, configurations and systems available out there. In our case, I'm going to collect a meta of London Heathrow over here, and we are going to have a look at that. Now, weather data, what do we have? 210 at 14, 10 kilometers in light rain, broken clouds, overcast clouds, 12 degrees, QNH 1026, temporarily rain. So QNH 1026, whenever we get a QNH value, we are going to dial it in over here, like that. And we're also going to put it in the standby instruments. Now, some companies have a philosophy to actually set it in the standby instruments and then just leave them on the local QNH. Whether your company does that or not, you just do whatever your company tells you there. So, now that we've got our weather data available, we can confirm the runway in use. In the real world, obviously, we would have requested an ATIS and not a meta, and the ATIS would have told us the runway in use. But we got to be fine with what we have available here in the sim, so this is what we got, this is what we use. Okay, so let's now go into the preparation for the arrival. The first thing we do is just a quick reminder of the ECAM status. There is no STS shown over here, so we know there is nothing in the status. But we would check it to make sure if there is anything abnormal that we need to be aware of during our approach planning. But today, nothing over there. So then we can go into the landing performance, and this we can find right over here in our electronic flight bag. Again, it might look different for the software you are using. Since the runway is wet today, we are going to calculate our braking action good. I'm just going to refresh the meta here and apply the latest. And finally, we got to calculate our landing weight. Now, calculating the landing weight of obviously um, can be a little bit of a challenge if you don't know exactly what kind of route you're going to fly. But here's a little suggestion I have for you. In our case today, we have 2,500 kilograms of estimated fuel on board at the destination. We currently have 3,600, that means we're going to burn 1,100 kilos. So if we take the gross weight down here, then we can say 6,300 is the calculated weight. And let's just add a couple hundred kilos in order to be conservative. So 6,500, for example, would be a good weight to calculate. So let's go right in here. Landing weight, 60.5. Then auto brake. I have done a separate video already on the landing configurations that are preferred. So today we are going to keep things simple. We will take a low auto brake, idle reverse, auto thrust on, and we're going to take a flaps config full landing. Just be aware that config 3 is used just as often, if not more often, than config full. So both configurations are available for you to use. And for the rest of it, just check the separate video that I've done on the topic. All right, so with that, we have pretty much selected our airplane's config. And down here, we've got landing distance procedure. Now, landing distance procedure is Airbus language for we've got an abnormal that affects our landing distance. And down here, you could select anything you need. But today, we don't have anything. So we're just going to take it like this. And then over here, we are going to get our landing distance required. Be aware that... LDR, the one down here, is the one that we will actually need, but 1.15 LDR is what the legal requirement for us is, so we need to have 1.5 LDR within the landing distance available over here in order to be legally allowed to land. Now, some airlines might again require some little bit more conservative calculations. For example, my airline, if you plan to not use the reverser, so if you plan idle reverse, and you've got a wet runway, then they want you to calculate medium to poor. As you can see, adds a couple meters to the landing distance. But then again, that is company specific. My airline wants us to do that. Other airlines might not. So 
like that you can always um, adjust your calculations as needed. Now let's go ahead and have a look into how we're going to insert and prepare our FMS for the landing. And we're going to start with a little logic here. So Airbus has designed the thing in a certain way and basically they want you to do a couple of stairs. So you start over here, move over here, top, right, bottom, right. So flight plan, nav route, progress, performance, fuel prediction, secondary flight plan. And that's it. That's how they do it. So we're going to start on the flight plan page. And over here, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we verify or reselect the star as applicable. If you need to select a new star, you can always access the arrivals page by clicking the LSK6 left here next to the arrival runway. And then go on arrivals and over here you could reselect anything you need. If you want to stay, for example, on the landing runway but choose a different star, you could just use the arrow key to the right and like that access the new menus. Likewise, arrow to the left brings you to the previous page, etc. So if you need to reselect anything, you can do that over here. Now, today we don't need to reselect it as the weather conditions state similar to what we have planned for. So what we're going to do now is we are going to insert our, and most importantly, check our star. And for this, we obviously need our approach chart. So let's go ahead and grab one. Heathrow, arrival, and we need the Logan 2 Hotel, which is located right up here. We also need the initial approach from Lambourne. And for the approach chart itself, we need the ILS 27 right. All right, and with that, we now got all the charts available. So starting on the Logan 2 Hotel then, there are a couple things that um, are important for us over here. The first thing is that we check that all the waypoints and the constraints are matching. The second is to check if there is any speed restriction or anything we need to enter. But let's start step by step and we're going to start with the approach path and the constraints. Again, the easiest way, since in here you might not necessarily see the very constraints, but the Airbus will only tell you with the stars if it's able to comply with what's in there. The easiest way to do this is to go to the plan mode and select the constraints and then just go to a lower range, something like 20 or 40 usually works quite well. So let's have a look then. We start over at Logan and we've got flight level 250 in there, which is also visible on the chart over here. Then we continue towards Sabre, where we are expecting flight level 160. And again, clicking the arrow keys up and down, we can have a look at that. And indeed, we've got Sabre at level 160. Then the star continues towards Brazo and then Weasel, maximum 250 knots. So in here we've got Brazo and then we've got Weasel at 250 knots. And from there we continue towards uh, Lambourne, where we've got a speed limit of 220 knots and flight level 70 as a fixed restriction. And as you can see, that's exactly what we have. From there we continue on to the initial approach from Lambourne which we have available on the chart over here. Now, from Lambourne, we proceed outbound on the 272 radial until 11 dB. And that is what we have here. And note that we have flight level 70 as a restriction. On the star chart, it says minimum holding level. And for us, that's going to be 70 today. As you can see, minimum holding altitude 7 here as well. So that's good. That's all okay. Then we've got a left-hand turn over here to the um, to this point over here. Now, what is that point and why is it named the way it is? Well, it's D21260. Now, if you have a look at the chart, you can see that from the Bovington viewer, we've got radial 126 and that thing is located at 15 DME. So what that tells us is the following. That waypoint over here is Radial 126 and the letter O, Oscar, is the 15th letter in the alphabet. Therefore, D1260 is from the bombing in VOR, Radial 126, DME 15. And that one we are supposed to cross above 6,000 feet, which as you can see we have in here. The next one then is D126S. And D126S, as you can see, is still on the same radial, but 19 dME and maximum 180 knots. And as you can see, we do have that in here. That does get a bit cluttered, so let's go another mile down on the range and have a look at the further routing. 
So now it's going to be a right hand turn. And since we're going for 2 6 right, we are now looking to cross radial 131 above 3,500 feet. And in here, bombing 131 above 3,500 feet is what we have. And from there, we join the uh, 10 mile final at 3,000. And thereafter, 7.5 miles at 2,500. And as you can see, we do have all of that in here. Now, then we can move on to the ILS chart. And on the ILS chart, we are going to find the uh, following. So we have the Fox India 27 ride at 2500, and it is a 3 degree descent. So we can see Fox India 2500 and a 3 degree descent down here as well. Now, the missed approach routing, if we need it, is climb straight ahead when passing 1580 or 0 dB from the ILS, whichever is later climbing turn right on track 316 to 3000 feet, then as directed. As you can see over here, we've got 1580 feet and then 3000 feet, which is going to be a track of 316. And normally I would expect down here an H316 to indicate that the plane really wants to fly that track. Over here, unfortunately, it doesn't show us that, but we're basically aware that the missed approach routing is more or less what we uh, want it to be. Okay, then we can move on to the RATNAV page. And on the RATNAV, we're going to enter anything we need for the approach. So basically, we could take Lamborn, Lima Alpha Mike, and then we could take Bovington, Bravo, November, November. And that is basically the waypoints that we have talked about for the entire approach now. For that reason, I'm just going to tune them both on the RATNAV page. Be aware the Airbus is certified to fly it without conventional backup, but it is good airmanship to use it. So we could also tune the uh, headings there, so 272 on the course on Lambourne, and then 126 on the course of uh, Bovington, so that we've got this very part over here covered already. Next up, moving to the progress page, we verify that we've got GPS primary and a uh, high accuracy. And we're also going to insert our landing room over here, so Heathrow 27 right is going to be where we are landing on. Then we move on to the performance page, after we've checked the um, RMP requirement for the approach. So if you were to fly an RNF approach, for example, you'd enter 0 0.3 or whatever is required on the approach. So just make sure the RMP here is okay. It is also automatically adjusted in the Airbus, so we do check that again at a later point in the descent. And, well... 2.0 en route is okay for us, and since we're flying in ILS, we don't really need to adjust it at all. Next, we move to the performance page. Over here on the truce page, we verify that the cabin rate of descent shows us a sensible number. Minus 350 is the default and is good for what we are about to do. Then we go on to the next page and check that our descent speed target is fine. If you're flying, for example, a very low cost index, you might get something like 260 knots or so in the descent. Put it to something reasonable. The Brits usually like it 280 or 300 knots, so 279 from our cost index is totally fine, but you can adjust this value as needed. Then we go to the next phase, which is the approach phase. And over here we now enter all the important information for the approach. Let's just bring up the weather again that we have requested already earlier. Like this. So we can tell that on the approach page, QNH 1026. Temperature 12, and the wind we said is 210 at 14. Note that it might automatically insert a wind if something is uplinked, but you do not want that. You override it with whatever you have available on the ATIS. The transition flight level down here is not changed usually. And then you go to the minimum. Now we've got two different minima here, barrow and radio. The barrow minimum is used on any approach except for an ILS CAT 2 or an ILS CAT 3. So in case of our approach today, since we plan to fly an ILS CAT 1 into a manual landing, we are going to use the minimum that's published down here, 278. So 278 is what we insert over here. Next up, we choose between our landing configuration and if we were to go for landing flaps 3, just so that you have heard it. You not only select it down here, but you also need to select it up here on the GPWS panel, landing flap 3. Otherwise, you are going to get 
into trouble with the ECAM landing memo and the GPW as some um, flaps call outs. But as management, we want to do config full today, so let's uh, remove these selections and go back to config full down here. Finally, you go into the next page, and on the go around page, you're going to enter the um, engine out acceleration, and that is going to be your minimum safe altitude or the missed approach altitude if that is below the MSA. As you can see, today we are doing a missed approach into the northwestern sector. So in the northwest, 2200 is our MSA. 3000 is the missed approach altitude. That means we're going to enter 2200 as our engine out acceleration altitude. So pretty much like this. The next thing then, you go down to the fuel prediction page. You can see we got 100 kilos extra fuel there, which equals uh, 3 minutes. And finally, we go into the secondary fly plan, copy the active and then insert whatever is needed. In Heathrow, for example, in case they change the runways, it might be an idea to insert runway 27 left as our landing runway, but you can literally choose anything that does make sense. So, in this case, I prepared Heathrow 27 left, then, of course, also go to the performance and um, check that all the numbers you inserted are still there. The minimum usually needs to be reinserted, so something like that, let's say 280, you would get that from the chart, but you get where I'm going with this. Just prepare the secondary for something that does make sense for your approach. And with that, we are already done down here. The last thing to do for us for the descent preparation is to select the auto brake. So we have calculated auto brake low, as you can see. So let's select that up here. And with that, we are already done with our descent preparation and we can start our descent. So, that's going to be it for this tutorial. I would like to thank you very much for watching. Hope that you learned something. And if you did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe. And finally, if you really like what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link that you can find in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.